Good morning, Dr. Evan here with Dr. Evan's Almost Daily Dose. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today I'd like to talk about the three tests that you need to do in order to determine if you have mold inside of your body. Okay, but before we do that, let me introduce myself to those of you who don't know me. My name is Dr. Evan Hirsch. I'm a functional medicine MD and my goal is to help 100,000 people resolve their chronic fatigue. I had chronic fatigue for five years and I resolved it using the Fix Your Fatigue program that I developed at my clinic at the Hearst Center for Integrative Medicine here in Olympia, Washington. And I'm on a, I'm on a mission to help 100,000 more people resolve theirs. And I'm doing that through Facebook Live blogs. I wrote a book and I'm gonna create classes and some other things. So thanks for tuning in. So let's talk about the three tests that you have to, uh, that you have to do in order to assess for mold inside your body. So the first test is a urine mycotoxin test. So this test that I like is by Real Time Laboratories. And what it does is it's looking at the mold toxins that are in your body. You may have been exposed, exposed to mold when you were five years old. You're no longer in that home. You're no longer being exposed to mold, but you have mold and mold toxins that may be living inside your body ever since that time that's triggering the immune system to cause autoimmunity whatever so these mycotoxins can stay in your body for long periods of time and some people you know they'll um you know historically we've heard of these people who have allergies they move to arizona and they feel so much better sometimes it's the dry climate because of those different allergies and sometimes it's it was mold that triggered those allergies and then you move to a dry climate and all of a sudden your body in general is less damp people generally will talk about this during the summer being in warmer climates they'll notice that their joint pain is better and that they have less symptoms if they have mold toxicity and mold issues so that's the first thing so urine mycotoxin test now the test is quite expensive it's seven hundred dollars but when you repeat it um, you it's two hundred dollars so you know an average of about um, 400 450 dollars or so but it, it really is the best test for looking at mold toxins in your body and it is covered completely by Medicare so those folks who have Medicare they do have the benefit of getting this test for no cost the next test is a visual contrast test or a VCS test visual contrast sensitivity test and what this is is this is looking at where the mold can sometimes be stored in the brain which is the occipital lobe in the back that has to do with your vision and your ability to determine the difference between white and black so if you have on, on a sheet of paper in front of you if you have challenges determining the difference between colors between contrasts that's another thing that you can do this test you can go to vcstest.com that's vcstest.com and for ten dollars you can take this test it's a really great test it's 92 percent sensitive so that means that if it says you have it if you said you have a biotoxin illness or a mold-based illness then you most likely do as opposed to um, tests that have a, um, a, a false positive rate where sometimes they say you have it and you don't have it so it's a very good test and it'll take you probably about 15 or 20 minutes where you'll sit down in front of the computer you'll set it up the way that they recommend and take the test so that's a really great test to do and oftentimes we'll have people do that every three or six months um, to monitor progress. Now it does test for biotoxin illness, which means it could be mold, it could be lime, sometimes heavy metals, but mostly it's mold. So really great test for doing that. And then the last test is a test to look at mold in your nose. And so sometimes this is done by labs that also do Marcon's testing, which stands for multiple antibiotic resistant coagulase negative staph, which is a certain kind of staph infection, spelled M-A-R-C-O-N-S. And those labs will also generally do a fungal test as well. It's not a perfect test. You can have mold in your sinuses and they don't show up on this. But the part of this test is really getting a good sample, getting up into the sinuses in order to get a good sample. So that's another good test, especially if someone has chronic sinus disease or chronic sinus condition. You may not know, but a number of years ago, 1999, I believe, my Mayo Clinic did a landmark study showing that a third of all chronic sinus conditions were fungal related. So that could be yeast or that could be mold. 